What you're looking at right here is the hatch or skylight that we put in the van. We need a way to transition from the ceiling and make a nice clean transition up into the roof hatch area. To do that, I'm using this one and a half inch aluminum angle. It's one and a half by one and a half by a sixteenth inch thick. And I've cut that so that it will slide right in here and it will be screwed and epoxied to the ceiling panel and then all of this is going to be covered in marine vinyl. Now we don't want this too tight because it would be very difficult to get the ceiling panel where it needs to go. We need to be able to remove it and take it out, put it back up. So I put a little strip of poly wall here. That's probably about a sixteenth inch also so that when I place this in here and I screw it in to get the right placement before putting the final screws and epoxy in, I want to make sure that I'm a little bit further away to make it easy to put in and take out. Now, on two sides, I put a small flange. If I slide this one out, you'll see you'll see that there's this added little piece here that sticks out. That's because on these two sides, I'm not gonna have any screw showing. So it's just gonna be flat and flush. So this will help hold the ceiling panel up by screwing this in. There won't be any other screws visible and it will hold the panel in place on the ceiling. This is the ceiling frame that's going to go where the hatch is going to be. And I've already talked about these pieces of aluminum, which are going to frame it. In order to bond the aluminum to the wood, I'm going to use epoxy and screws. To position these and get them in exactly the right position, I put the wood up exactly where it's going to go in the van and then I screwed them so I knew exactly where these pieces were going to go. Then I took it down, screwed the pieces in, and then put it back up and ensured proper fitting. Now that I've got these screws in place so that I know exactly where it's going to go, I'm going to disassemble it, clean all of the surfaces with acetone and alcohol and then I'm going to bond it together with a clear epoxy. I'm also going to drill additional holes in the wood and holes in the aluminum to help the epoxy bond to increase the surface area. I will also rough up the aluminum with both sandpaper and a utility knife cutting grooves at different angles to increase the adhesion of that epoxy. After the acetone, I'm wiping down all the surfaces with alcohol. Heck, I even wipe down the, the wood, get rid of all the dust before I put the epoxy on. All right, here it goes, first one.
I put those holes in so that the epoxy will go through the hole, provide a little dimple. That'll help hold everything together. And you can see the epoxy came out the holes I put in there. So I got my little dimples to help that adhere. And those screws will keep it nice and tight and act as clamps until I get actual clamps on there. Alright, now I'm going upwards to the next one here. We're just going to go clockwise. Cuts in here with the utility knife. It's what's nice about aluminum. Aluminum is soft. I can put these cuts in here at different angles, give that epoxy something to grab onto. Ooh, almost lost some of it. Your job is to squeeze out the edges. That's what I want. I want you to squeeze out the edges. I wasn't prepared to clamp and glue this up when I started. I didn't think it was going to be necessary, but after seeing how thick the glue was, how thick that epoxy was, and that the screws weren't squeezing enough of that epoxy out in places, I decided to break out all the clamps. And it's probably a really good idea that I did. And I didn't turn the camera on because my hands had so much glue on them then when I turned them off for a moment I ended up with glue on my hands and I couldn't press the button. I just removed all of the wax paper which was between the piece and the clamps so that the clamps wouldn't become glued to it and this epoxy is extraordinarily strong and now I'm going around taking the screws that I thought would be good enough to hold, have it clamped, but decided those screws were good enough. So I got all these screws out, and now it should be done. That looks pretty good. Yeah, some of the uh, some of the epoxy squeezed through the holes just I want, the way I wanted it to on both sides. Next, I'm going to put a bracket right here, actually on the inside. I've cut four pieces of aluminum and I'm going to take these four pieces of aluminum and put them on each corner and bond it together right there and that will make this much much stronger. I've cut this so close that I cannot put 
the brackets on the inside. If I put the brackets on the inside, this will not fit. And there'll be a gap that will be great enough that water might be able to get in if it starts to rain. So I'm going to put this on the inside and epoxy that in. That'll provide a lot of strength to this. And nobody's going to see it because this will all be covered with marine vinyl. You can see that piece of aluminum right here. It's the same aluminum, just a smaller piece that I cut. And I screwed it in here. I screwed it in this way so I could see if this would fit up in the hole in the van. But the fit is so tight that the screw heads themselves, that screw head on this side, the screw head on the other side, is enough thickness that it doesn't fit. It's very tight. I could probably push it in, but then have a difficult time getting it out. So I'm confident that once I epoxy this up and remove the screws, it'll fit really well. I expect to use these screw holes when I install it to actually put a screw in sideways to hold this all together. So there's a reason for those holes more than just holding it together while the epoxy is bonding. And hopefully I can get those screws out after it's done. If not, I'll just have to grind them off. And that's okay too.